Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host Muhammad Azum, and in this particular video, we're going to learn about ASP.NET MVC HTML helpers. So, if you're familiar with ASP.NET MVC framework, you already know that you cannot use or should not use the Web Forms control, which include Grid View, Table, Data Grid, Wizard Control, and all of those controls that do does a post back that carries a view state with them or else it will be killing the purpose of using ASP.NET MVC. So in ASP.NET MVC framework, you can either create your control by simple HTML, and I'm going to show you, or you can use HTML helpers. So let's say you want to create a simple text box control. So you can always say input type equal to text, okay? And you can say value equal to foo. And this is the basic, of course, the HTML syntax uh, to create a text box control. Now, if I go ahead over here and if I refresh the page, you are going to see a text box with a foo inside it. Okay. Now, in HTML helpers, you can use the same thing and you can say HTML, let's see, HTML dot text box. So you can create a text box and everything is of course an extension matter. So over here you can see the different kind of overloads that it accepts. It can have a name, it can have a name and a value, it can have name, value and i dictionary, HTML attributes, so all of that kind of stuff that it can carry. So we can give it some name, let's say name is first name, full name. Okay. And if you go over here and you refresh it, basically it will create a text box and you can go behind the page source and you can see that it really created a text box control with a name, full name, an ID of full name type is text. So basically what it's doing is simply creating a control for you, okay? So it's helping you out and hence the name HTML helpers. Now you can create some other controls and you can use some other features. Let's say you want a value to be populated, so you can some uh, say over here, dummy value, okay? But most of the time, you will be interested in assigning something to, uh, to this. So if I say over here, like the other parameter is a class, so you can also say HTML attributes, okay? So you can provide, oops, not the dictionary, but you can provide an anonymous kind of like type and over here you can provide like what kind of class that will have so if you say class it will it's going to say that okay class is a reserved word and you cannot use it some people try to use this this syntax and then uh, they assign it like blue text box or whatever the class that it has um, you can actually use at class okay and uh, if I go to see that if I even have this blue text box, let me actually see if it's in the content. I will go down and I do have a blue text box. So it's gonna copy paste it over here, okay? So the at sign will actually uh, resolve to the, to the class because class is a reserved keyword. Let's go ahead and refresh it. So it basically creates a blue text box and if I go ahead and view the source, you will see that class over here is defined as the blue text box. You can also run loops and create other stuff. Like if you want to create a radio button list, you can run the loop or you can design your own HTML helper class. For that, I have a HTML helper and I have a view data, which is populated with customers. So if I go back to my code over here, I can simply say, uh, for each var customer in view data of customers, I will have to do this casting to a list type to get uh, the thing out, okay? So right now the loop is in process of running, okay? And now I can say over here, okay, it's going to create me HTML dot radio button so I can create a radio button I can give it any name I'm just gonna just give it RB okay and I can put something 
over here and I can say like okay radio button and then I can say okay this will be a customer dot first name but I think that's all the property I have not sure why it's giving let me see the argument for that so it's requiring the name and the values then let's say that this is the this thing and then customer dot oh here we go you have an ID and you can do over here because you need you need to display the name uh, also right so here we go if you find it familiar this is because the web forms radio button list or the radio button control have a text property which uh, basically adds the text that you assign to the right hand side or the left hand side whichever you specify at this point i think i'm just going to go ahead and close the loop and this will close the loop let's go ahead and run this and you'll see that the two uh, are actually created and i can select one of them because uh, the name will be the same okay so name and id everything is same and you can actually see the values pass as the ID and the name uh, and the text is of course onto the right hand side but of course you are free to move it onto the left hand side it's just you have the complete control on the HTML that is rendered so if I move it to the uh, left hand side I'm just going to move this thing onto the left hand side okay so this was just the introduction to the HTML helper controls, which are available in ASP.NET MVC. And if you check it out, they have a quite a bunch of controls available, which you can make use of. They have a render partial also. They have a password, a list box. So basically they have all the controls uh, that are actually available in the web forms, but now you have more control over it. And if you don't, if you find that there are some controls missing, like a calendar control or a grid view control or a table control, hey, guess what? You can just go and use or extend this particular HTML helper, add your control to it, and that's pretty much what you do. Um, in the next tutorial, I will go through some of the other controls, and after that, we're going to take a look at how you can create your own HTML helper to assist you with uh, some of the HTML, I guess, okay? Hope you like this screencast, and if you do have any requests, please email me at azamsharp at gmail.com. If you do want to sponsor a screencast, you can always email me at azamsharp at gmail.com. Thank you very much.